program surgeon. <clears throat> Thomas would remember it for years afterwards as being one of the great moments in his life. It was not long after dusk when he'd entered the Expo Park by the Porte des Attractions, showing his newly issued delegates pass to the security guard, who had never asked to see it again. Passing by the as yet silent and unopened amusement park on his left, he entered the Place de Belgique, then took a right turn. This avenue too was quiet. The cable cars stood empty and motionless high above him, their bodies thrown into brilliant relief by the fluorescent light which gleamed out from innumerable futuristic lampposts placed along the walkways. As for the atomium itself, it was now directly ahead of him and Thomas caught his breath when he saw it. Each one of the aluminium spheres was festooned with a crisscrossing network of silver lights and the effect was at once festive, majestic and otherworldly as if this were a Christmas celebration on the planet of some far-flung galaxy. Raising his eyes hundreds of feet to the topmost sphere, Thomas could see the warmer, yellower lights of the restaurant, the very place towards which his eager footsteps were now leading him. A bit later on, Thomas took a glass of champagne from one of the waitresses, and realising at once that it would be hard to get into conversation with any of the already tightly knit groups that had formed throughout the room, he wandered over to one of the vast plate glass windows. It didn't bother him for now that his invitation to this dinner had obviously been an afterthought. He could have stood forever by that window, sipping champagne and looking down on the multicoloured lights of this incredible new metropolis, so busy, so modern, shimmering with life and promise. He felt that he was looking into the future from the clearest and loftiest vantage point that the technological ingenuity of man could devise. He felt like a king of the universe. 